everybody, all, everybody's uh, recuperated from last week's sermon on circumcision. Okay, we're all, okay. So you're, you're, you're here this week, so either you're really gutsy or you weren't here last week or, or you just love God. All right. Lord, we do ask that uh, once again that you would help us uh, to be doers of your word. It's, it's, you tell us that it's the doers of the word that, that are blessed. And we want to be doers and we want to we want to apply the things that your word says to us. And we, so we thank you for helping us in that in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Today we're on our, our third uh, in our series of entering into the promised land. The, the first week we talked about uh, separation uh, from the past, crossing over Jordan. Last week we talked about circumcision, which is the covenant relationship uh, with God. And today we're at Jericho. Woohoo! Yay! Awesome. Okay, you got your Bibles. Turn to uh, Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. And we're going to start in verse 10. It says, Now while the sons of Israel camped at Gilgal, they observed the Passover on the evening of the 14th day of the month on the desert plains of Jericho. On the day after Passover, on that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day after they had eaten some of the produce of the land, so that the sons of Israel no longer had manna. But they ate some of the yield of the land of Canaan during that year. Uh, now I want to stop right here for a minute. Okay. Uh, no more manna. Okay. Came down from, from heaven. Uh, it was there in the mornings. They didn't, have to, they didn't have to farm. They didn't have to hunt. All they had to do was collect. Okay. That's done now. All right. So you've got one of two choices. You either kind of get with the program of what God's doing, or you starve. <laughs> Amen? And sometimes we get to a place in our lives where God allows us to have a certain, for lack of a better word, pass on things, and then all of a sudden there comes a day where He says, okay, now things are going to change, and we're going to, for lack of a better word, grow up. Okay? And... Um, I remember when I first got saved, um, I did not know nothing from nothing as far as the Bible was concerned. I had a uh, pocket New Testament that was given to me when I was at the lovely resort of Paris Island, South Carolina. Uh, I carried it with me. It was more of a good luck charm than anything else because I really didn't understand what it was about. But lo and behold, God in His infinite mercy uh, saved me. And I began to share my faith with others, even though I didn't know anything about the Bible, but I did know you're supposed to tell other folks what happened to you. So I did. And, and people would ask questions, and I would I have my little pocket New Testament, and a little smaller than this, and because uh, my pockets were smaller too. So. And I'd, I'd open it up, and every, it would be right there. It would, it would be awesome, you know, and I'd be like, well, the Bible says... You know, and, and it would be there. And it was great, and it was, it was awesome, and it lasted for like about three or four months. And one day, the Lord said, quit treating this like a rabbit's foot and start studying. Okay? The manna was done, and it was time to get busy on uh, getting some food together. All right? Okay, so... Uh, let's see, where was I? All right. Now, it came about when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man was standing opposite him with a sword drawn in his hand. Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? He said, No, rather I have come now as captain of the Lord's host. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and bowed down and said to him, What has my Lord to say to his servants? The captain of the Lord's host said to Joshua, Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you're standing is holy ground. And Joshua did so. Okay. He learned a very important lesson, and that is 
God is for righteousness. God is for holiness. God is for perfection. God is for himself. Okay? A lot of times we get caught up into this, uh, well, it, it, God's, God's for me, and, and God, since God's for me, that means he's not for you. Because I'm mad at you, or I'm at, at odds with you. And, and we, uh, whenever, even in the, in the confinements of the body of Christ, I hear this constantly. When someone's uh, been out of shape with someone else, well, I'm just serving God and they're not. Or they don't love God as much as I do. Or they're just in deception because they're not doing what I say God says she should do. And we have this us versus them type of mentality. And God says, you know what, I'm for neither one of you. Okay? Because God's for everybody. It's his will that all men be saved. All right? It's his will that all people come to the knowledge of the truth. And Joshua was very, very smart. And when the Lord tells him this, he had the proper response. He stood there and went, oh, man, that's not fair. No, he, he got on his face and he said, what do you want me to do? Okay, because obviously it's not about me. And it's really not about them. Lord, what would you have me do? Okay. He says, well, what? For starters, you can take the sandals off your feet because this is holy ground. Okie doke, we can do that. Now, chapter 6 and verse 1, it says, Now Jericho was tightly shut because of the sons of Israel, and no one went in, no one went out. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hands with its king and its valiant warriors. Jericho was completely shut up. Now, they were shut up for a reason. They were ready for a fight. Now, that seems like, like a contradiction, but what they did is the idea was we have these huge walls, these thick walls. No one has ever been able to penetrate it. A lot of scholars believe they began building the wall when they found out about Israel crossing the Red Sea and what happened to Pharaoh's army. And they've had a long time to get this thing together to stock up supplies. And the mentality was, we're going to close the doors. We've got enough stuff here to last us for a long time. You're going to get tired and leave. Okay? You're going to get tired and leave. All we got to do is outweigh you. Okay? If you're stupid enough to try to get through our walls, we'll just throw stuff on top of you. Okay? What they didn't do is say, oh, you're here to take over? Okay. They didn't do that. All right? But understand something. They were afraid because they realized that Israel had something going for them that was beyond the natural. Okay? Now, they were very well fortified. They were very well established. Yet God gave them into Israel's hands. Over in Exodus 19.5, it says, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you'll be a peculiar treasure unto me for all people, for all the earth is mine. God was able to give Israel Jericho because it belonged to him. Jericho belonged to the Lord and all the lands thereof. Now, People will, will ask a very, uh, from the world's viewpoint, a very legitimate question. Is that fair? I mean, Jericho was, wasn't, do, they were just minding their own business. And along comes Israel and God gives them Jericho. Is that fair of God to do that? Sure it is. Because God owned Jericho. And Jericho had the same opportunity to serve God as Israel did, and they said no. And if you read in Leviticus 18, they said no in a very defined and very perverse way. And we see people uh, in the world, they'll go through hardships and they'll say things like, God's not fair because I went through this. No, God is fair. God is just. God is perfect. And the things that we go through in life, and, and sometimes bad things happen to good people, that does happen. 
Sometimes things do go wrong for no apparent reason that we're aware of. But that's more the exception than the rule because we all are deserving of judgment. Okay? Now, uh, the Bible teaches that when that happens, we have a recourse, and that is called repentance and confession. And when we find ourselves under judgment, when we confess and repent before the Lord, God restores us. And those that have rejected God, unfortunately, don't have that luxury. That is why they need for the body of Christ to tell them that. Yeah, you know what? You're going through a hard time. Yes, this thing is happening to you it is very difficult. But there is a God that will in heaven that will help you if you turn to him. But since he owns everything and since he's in charge of everything, he does get to choose how it's done. And he's already said, if you will repent and forsake sin, I will heal and I will restore. Okay. Now, um, world will say, well, God's, God's not fair because he just wants to take stuff from me. Well, yeah, God does want to take some things from you. He wants to take your sin. He wants to take your sickness. He wants to take your despair. He wants to take a lot of things. He wants to take away your shame. Yeah, there's a lot of things God wants to take from you. Uh, I would encourage you to let him have it. Okay. All right, let's go on the story. Uh, verse 3. He says, this is what you're going to do. You're going to mount, march around the city, all the men of war circling the city once. Okay. Now you're going to do this for six days. Also, seven priests shall carry seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. Then on the seventh day, you're going to march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall be that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the walls of the city will fall down flat, and the people will go up, every man straight ahead. Okay? So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, let seven priests carry seven trumpets of ram's horn before the Ark of the Lord. Then he said to the people, Go forward, march around the city, let the armed men go on before the Ark of the Lord. And it was so that when Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord went forward and blew the trumpets, and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard came after the Ark while they were continued to blow the trumpets. Joshua commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout, nor let your voice be heard, nor let a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I tell you shout, and then you're going to shout. Okay? Now, Once again, you put yourself in Israel's shoes. You were born in the desert, okay, because everybody who came out of the land of Egypt, they died in the wilderness uh, because they rejected uh, God's direction the first time. You get to the promised land after marching around the desert for 40 years. You cross the Jordan, that's just a wild raging turn, but you cross on dry land because God, you know, He dries it up. That's awesome. You're like, woo, nothing, nothing's going to stop us now. God, what do you want us to do? I want you to get circumcised. Oh, all right. And now you've got to go through this personal pain and a sense of loss. But you do it because God said to. And now God, because he loves you, he gives you some time to get healed up. And now we're going to go against Jericho that has spent a lot of time getting ready for you. Okay, and they've got a lot of supplies, they've got big thick walls, and they got all the stuff inside, and plus, there's a lot of people inside too. And God says, I'm going to give you the city, it's going to be yours, and this is what I want you to do, and this is how we're going to do it. I want you to walk around the city one time for six days. You're going to walk around and then you're going to go home. And the next day you're going to do the same thing again. Now, you're Israel. You've been hearing about this for a long time. 
Joshua comes and, hey, I, I, I saw the Lord last night. He said, they're mine. We're going to take them. And he's a valiant warrior. And sharpen your swords. Get all your stuff together. And we're going to walk. And we're going to go home. Have you lost your mind? This is our battle plan. We're going to walk. We're going to have a parade. Oh, but we're going to carry the ark. Okay? And you guys are going to be in for it. And the priest is going to blow some trumpets. Uh, seven day, the seventh day, we're going to do this seven times. Okay? Oh, and, and, and by the way, um, you can't say nothing while you're walking around. No smack talking. You guys, we're going to let you have it. You know, you just wait tomorrow, maybe the next day, or actually six days from now. You know, no, no smack talking. Talking got them in a lot of trouble. And talking gets us in a lot of trouble, too. Sometimes it's really good to be quiet. All right? Let your actions speak for you. Murmuring and complaining kept them in the wilderness for 40 years. All right. Over in uh, Psalm 62 and verse 1, it says, My soul waits in silence for God only. From Him is my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold, I shall not be greatly shaken. Let me tell you something. Jericho, they was greatly shaken. Okay. They were shaken to the point where their walls come down. You're not allowed to talk. Why? Because the focus is on the Lord. The focus is on the Lord and not on us. Then we're going to shout to the Lord. And then we're going to fight. Okay? We're going to fight. Now, let's look at how this practically walks out in a contemporary form. We've got to walk around the city for six days. All right? Now, in other words, we've got to activate our faith. We've got to do something. God did not say you're going to have the city and they're just going to come out and hand it to you. No, that, that doesn't happen. We hear a lot about taking cities for God, about reaching the lost, about uh, uh, helping people to come to knowledge of Christ. They don't just volunteer that over to the church. Okay? Uh, for those of you who were here uh, earlier today, they weren't, there wasn't a long line of unsaved people waiting to get in here. Okay? The devil's certainly not going to hand folks over. So that means we have to activate our faith. We've got to do something. Okay? He says, you're gonna, but you're going to carry the ark, or in other words, we're going to carry the presence of God. All right? It's Christ in you. The Bible says that it's a mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory. As we carry the presence of God with us, as we manifest Jesus to a lost world, people get saved. Okay? Uh, blow the trumpets. We're going to worship. We're going to celebrate. Okay? We're not going to complain. We're not going to murmur. We're not going to whine about things. All right, all right, let's go on. Seventh day, we're going to do something seven times. Sometimes God calls us to do the same thing over and over again. I'm sure the first time they get back there, they go, well, that was kind of fun. I mean, you know, you stretched legs, went out for a walk, you know. Second day, oh, that was kind of, you know, weird. I mean, we did the same thing again. Third day, fourth day, you know. Hey, I saw a guy up there. I'm, I've waved at him the last five days. Hey, you know, I'll be seeing you soon. You know, and sometimes God has us do the same thing over and over again. And we think, well, am I just wasting my time? No. If he called you to do it, if that's what he said to do, you're not wasting time. It's called obeying what he said. All right? And then he said, no talking. All right? Even though they weren't allowed to speak, they still could walk. All right? And sometimes we get ourselves in a, in a tizzy, well, if I can't say what I want to say, then I'm not going to do anything at all. Don't do that. All right? Don't do that. Because there was a time when it came time 
to shout to the Lord. There was a time where God calls each one of us to where we have to make an obvious stand for the Lord. We're not just part of a crowd. We're not just biding time. We're not trying to sneak through the land. There comes a point in time where you have to make an obvious stand for the Lord. And fear and embarrassment play no part in that. Okay? Because right afterwards, they had to fight because the walls came tumbling down. Okay? And we in the body of Christ, we talk a lot about fighting, but there's a kind, comes a time where you got to quit talking about it and you got to do it. And that is not like it is today. All right, we, we look at things today and, and uh, we see uh, movies on the TV, somebody gets shot and they'll be like, oh, you know, and they'll, they'll fall over. And it was, it's not like that at all. You had to get up right in their face and kill them right there. You didn't do it from 200 yards away. You didn't do it from 20 feet away. You did it right there. And you had to do it. Okay. That means when them walls came down, you had to climb over the rubble, get through there. And let, let, understand something. Behind those walls was a lot of people. And you had to go in there, and you had to get busy. And there comes a time when God says, all right, child, it's time to get your hands dirty. All right. Now, that is something that can be very unnerving, especially for Israel, because these guys had the stuff to do it, but they didn't have the experience. These guys have been marching around the wilderness in circles for 40 years. They weren't fighting that whole time. There was occasional battle. But as far as being a warrior, they, they really didn't have a lot of experience on what to do. Okay? Fortunately, you didn't have to know a whole lot. <laughs> Take your sword, stick it in front of you, and start waving it around, and whatever, you know. And if somebody's in front of you, poke them with it, all right? If you got a rock, hit somebody on the head with it. You know, whatever it takes, get the job done. And sometimes we have a tendency of discounting our warfare because we think we're not sophisticated enough. Okay? Take your sword, wave it around in front of you. If you poke somebody with it, go forward. All right? Okay, let's not make it harder than it needs to be. Does anybody not understand what I just meant by that? Because if you, if you don't, let, let me know now, because I'll, I'll, I'll ramble on a little bit about that. Okay? This is, this is the sword of the Word of God. You know, get it in front of you. If, if you hit somebody with it, go forward. Start talking to them about the Lord. All right? Okay. All right. Walls, uh, the Bible says, fell down from its very foundation. Rahab and her family were spared because they hid the spies. We talked about that uh, a couple weeks ago. And as a result of that, her family was spared. Now, could you imagine, uh, a lot of the, the apartments or houses were, were on top of the wall around the city. Okay? And you're on that wall... The Bible says that her place was there, and she let them out the window and stuff. And uh, you're on the wall, and, and you, you got a bird's eye view of all this stuff. All right, here they come. There they go. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, that was odd. Nobody explained to me because they couldn't say nothing, so nobody explained what was going on. But, oh, here they come again. There they go. All right. Um, Third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, you know. And, you know, I, I, I know I'm going to be spared, and I know I did the right thing. I believe their God is, is, is a great God, but he's a, he's a little weird right now. I don't know if I understand all this. And Seventh day, and here they come. And, whoa, hey, wait a minute, something's different to go around again. Oh, here we go, going around again. And again. And again, oh, okay, all right. All of a sudden, they stop and they shout, and everything comes down, including her floor. Because she's on top of the wall. <laughs> she had to ride that thing all the way to the ground. Okay. 
That can be quite unnerving. And she hit the ground and she was spared. Why? Because there was an angel that kind of made sure she was okay. And Israel came in and they put the smack down on everybody except her and her family because she had a covenant with God's people. All right. See, the world, a lot of times, will not understand what it is that we do. They don't understand the direction that God gives us. And they look at it and they go, okay, that was weird. Mm, not quite what I was expecting, but, you know. When you go and they say, aren't you mad at that person for what they did to you? They, I, I would be livid. No, I forgave them because... They don't know what they do. Well, that don't make sense at all. Well, that's okay because that's what God says to do. Back in the, oh gosh, late 20s, they did an archaeological uh, dig for the, the city of Jericho. And it's interesting because everything that, how the Bible describes it, they were able to look at that archaeologically and say, yes, this happened just like that. Who, who knew? Well, God did, and everybody read the Bible did. But, uh, you know, and we find that, that archaeologists have, have proven that all this happened. And something that was interesting in it is Jericho was the tithe of the land. He said, go in there and, and you don't take nothing for yourself. All right. Uh, now we're going we're gonna to take some things for the, for the treasury, for the, for the house of the Lord. But this is God's tithe. You don't take nothing for yourself. And when they did the archaeological dig, they found that there were storehouses of grain and, and different articles uh, that were burned up and, and, and destroyed. But they weren't taken like they normally were in a conquest. And they thought... All this stuff, they just burned and they didn't take it for themselves. Why? Well, because God said, don't do that. This belongs to me. And they honored the Lord, with the exception of, of one fella, and and uh, didn't work out well for him or his family. Now, I say that because... There are times when the world will look at your life and the things that you do for the Lord and they say, well, that seems like kind of a waste. Why would you do that? Why, why, why would you give money to help the poor? Or, or why would you give your time to help people that sometimes don't even care about whether or not you're helping them? That seems like kind of a waste, doesn't it? No, because... It pleases the Lord. And it's not about pleasing me, it's about pleasing the Lord. Joshua made a, a statement at the end of this. He said, uh, uh, let no one, anyone who builds on this will do it at the expense of their firstborn. And in 1 Kings 16, uh, we see Jericho is going to be rebuilt, and it did cost them the person who's firstborn. Interesting enough, everything in the Bible we find out is true. And God made a promise to Israel saying that I'm going to give the city into your hands, they, in turn, made a promise to Rahab and her, and her household that they would be spared, and everybody kept their word. And because everyone kept their word, victory was ensured. Okay? What has God spoken to you about? Okay? What has God promised you? What has He talked to you about? I want to encourage you, God keeps His word. He's not a man that he should lie, but he keeps his word. One of the things that we as the body of Christ um, put into practice, all right, is that we keep our word. 
and we tell the truth. And in that we find victory, and in that we find security, and in that even the non-believers will look at that and say, I don't necessarily understand you, but I do see you got something going for you. Don't forget about me when all this stuff comes crashing down. Okay. We heard earlier today there was two thieves uh, hanging there with Jesus. One of them was cursing him. One of them was mocking him. The other one, the, you know, we don't know how much knowledge he had of Jesus, but he did know that there was something about him that was different. And he said, Lord, remember me. I don't necessarily know a whole lot about you, but I do pray that you would remember me. And Jesus didn't rebuke him. He didn't say, well, you got to go to church, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do all these other things. He said, you know what? Today. Now, let me back up a little bit. Had he not been on the cross and living just life, there's a lot of things that he would need to do. Not for his salvation, but just as a result of his salvation. Okay, please understand that. Uh, he was on his way to death's door. All right. And he, he did what we call a last minute in by the skin of your teeth salvation. But it worked. Okay. It worked. All right. Um, let's pray a little bit. Let's pray a little bit. Now, just going back to what we talked about before we started today. We're going to be writing out prayer requests. We're going to be writing out things that we need help with, that we need freedom from, that we need deliverance from, that we, uh, those in our families uh, need help with. Please understand something. When, you, uh, when, when, we, when we do those things, we look at the Word of God and says, God, what do you say about this? Well, I've got a, I've got a family member that's not saved, and they, they need to be saved. And Well, what does God's Word say about that? He says, well, He says, uh, you and your household can be saved. He says, ask me, and I'll give the heathen as inheritance, or the most world for, for possession. So God promises me that if I take unsaved folks to Him, and seek His face, that He'll work on my behalf. So we stand on the promises of God. All right? Well, God, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in, a, in a bad way, and I, 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 need, I need a job. Or, you know, well, what does the Bible say? The Bible says it's good for a man to work. It's good for a woman to work. Well, I can stand on that. God, help me. Help me get a job. Whatever it is that, 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 you're, that we're going to put on here, whatever it is that we're struggling with, or we run across folks that are struggling with, what does God's Word say about that? And let's, let's hang on to that. Let's embrace that, okay? As we pray over the different things, begin to pray God's Word over it, okay? Um, and we will find that irregardless of how tall and how thick the walls are, they're no match for God. Okay? Israel walked around that place for a week. All right? But God brought it down in a moment. In a moment. Okay? It doesn't mean they wasn't supposed to walk around it. That was the direction. But please understand something. God brought it down in a moment. And you might find yourself in the challenge of repetition to where you're doing the same thing, same thing, and it doesn't seem like anything's happening. You just keep doing it. God's going to take care of things in an instant. All right. The day will come when the promise is fulfilled and victory is acquired. Amen. The ones who experienced victory at Jericho from Israel's point of view were simply the ones that were there. So my word to you is, be there, all right? Don't run, don't fall back, be there when it happens, all right? Lord, give us the strength to endure. Give us the 
the courage to trust you even when things seem a little weird. And give us the endurance. And Lord, when the time does come to, to do what, for lack of a better word, the hard things, let us not shrink back. Let us go forward and see the victory that you promised us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, um, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, this is, none of this matters to you at all. Okay? First thing you need to do is you need to give your life to the Lord and be saved. That means your sins are forgiven. That means shame is done away with. That means you have a eternal home in God's kingdom. I don't see a downside to any of that. All right. Um, today's a good day if you've never done that to make that happen. Okay. Um, now, also, you might be here today, and I'm sure there were some folks in Israel who were a little apprehensive about the battle. Okay. And they knew they were going to get a victory, and they knew all these things. But once the wall comes down, and, and everybody's standing there in front of you, and now you got to go do the deed, it's like, I don't know if I'm really up for this. Sometimes what God calls us to do can be quite unnerving. I don't want to stand in front of those folks and tell them anything about the Lord. <laughs> but, but we do it because God said to. And in that, we find victory. If you're having a struggle with that, let us pray with you about that. All right? Let us pray with you. Other than that, uh, let's take a moment. Let's worship the King. And if you'd like some prayer, come on down.